Father, this morning we come into your presence seeking your blessing, knowing that without your blessing we can achieve nothing of value today. Lord, we ask for the ministry of your Holy Spirit in our lives to guide us, to direct our thoughts, to give us the right words to say, to give us discernment, to just be with us. Your presence brings such joy and, and blessings and light. And I want to also pray for the college students who are canvassing, that you'll in, continue to encourage them, keep them safe, give them opportunities, Lord, to share their love for you. And we ask that you will bless us as we have assembly, that you will um, be here and bless us with your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today our assembly is a question and answer period. I have some pieces of paper. We have some questions we didn't finish last time. If you'll help pass these out to somebody who might like them. And we'll start with them. Can you define discretion and relate it to campus life at Washita Hills Academy? I think of discretion um, largely as good judgment. Uh, being able to make intelligent choices. Um, how does it relate to Washita Hills? Uh, in any area that you would have choices to make, um, such as uh, going into a room with a uh, person of the opposite sex, uh, and there's no staff there. You would be using discretion if you chose not to go into there. Uh, such as um, maybe seeing some, maybe having uh, someone accidentally drop their tray in the cafeteria. And instead of clapping and laughing and making a big deal of it, you help them. Uh, you would be using discretion, being discreet. Uh, we often think of discretion in terms of what we say. Uh, maybe we heard something that wasn't very complimentary about someone. And it's on the tip of our tongue to repeat, either to that person or to someone else. It would be using discretion to not repeat it. Private information. Did I hear that? I'll say it again. Um, the, uh, discretion is the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense and revealing or revealing private information. I think that's a good one to apply what she said um, to OHA. Do you all, staff, get annoyed when the girls use ghetto words? I do. Go ahead. Annoyed is not the word. Exactly what I was going to say. What would be a better word, you think? Saddened. <laughs> do you think we get annoyed? How does it how does it look, how does it look like annoyed? Because so, help us out if we, if you think we get annoyed, tell us how you think we look when we get annoyed. <laughs> if we don't do anything, what are we doing? We're accepting it. We're condoning it, right? And it's not that. I mean, sometimes sometimes ghetto words, if you want to call them that. Are, uh, is uh, may not be the, the worst words, 
but they're not the best words, and we want to aim for something better. That's what the watchword of true education is, and so we have a higher calling, so we want to try to call you up to something higher, something better. And if you just put Jesus in your place and said, would Jesus be saying that? That really wakes me up sometimes when I think about, you know, I think, would Jesus be doing this? What would his response be? Makes me think about what I say with more profound meaning. Will we be doing Christmas notes this year? Yes, of course. Uh, we will have a list out to you probably in the next day or two and encourage you to begin early writing your notes. Um, for those of you who are new, Christmas notes are a few short lines of positive things you see about that person. And they are a pain to write if you write everybody. I, I know that. I feel that pain every year. Um, but they're wonderful to Pain, get. not as in like... Pain in that it's hard to get them all done yeah. in my schedule. <laughs> not like it's annoyingly pain. You know, no, like not, a pain not, in the... <laughs> not truly painful. But they are challenging. Maybe that's a better word to write. But they're so nice to get. And the very act Activity of thinking about positive things about that person. Maybe that person you don't particularly care for or you don't really know and looking for them is wonderfully um, impactful on our own characters. So it's a good exercise. So I will put the list out today. It'll be posted on the uh, little shelf there. So it has a list of all the students and staff, so you can check them off as you write them. And you can know, you write your name on it so that you'll know that you don't lose it and you can keep it. And then you can start writing them already, just the little pieces of paper. They have to fit in what? A regular letter envelope. And so they shouldn't be big cards. They need to be, and they shouldn't be thick paper because you're going to, some of them, you know, you got to stuff them in there. We got to mail them to you over Christmas break. So make sure they're small. And don't make them like cut and paste, you know. You can do them on the computer, but try to make them individual. Something special about that person that you noticed. And if you didn't notice anything to write about, start looking. <laughs> Now's a good time to think about those things, what you can appreciate about them. Are we able to switch vocational training? because you were assigned. And if you don't like it, then you have to learn to like it because someday you're gonna have to learn things that you don't necessarily like to do, but it'll be useful in life. So be positive and keep going. <laughs> Go ahead. I know this year um, the staff have really worked hard to try to have everybody have a um, variety, like um, you know, different classes get to work in agriculture on different days. And so, and in the past, like last year, a lot of girls were complaining, oh, I want to work in ag, I want to work in ag. So now you guys get to work in ag, so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and so the, the staff do try to, you know, you know make, make vocational lab, you know, not just like straight, you know, every, every day doing the same thing this year. So I really like how they're trying to make more variety, but, you know, we should learn to enjoy whatever we're put into. And vocational lab is an opportunity to build skills, not only skills in what you're doing, but skill, work ethic type skills. And if you do well in what your job assignment is, your vocational lab assignment is, you'll find you have opportunities in the future to progress to other more responsible perhaps positions. If you don't apply yourself in those, you don't have much opportunity because you're needing to learn some basic skills you haven't actually mastered. So um, the be best way to have opportunity to change vocational lab is to apply yourself diligently to what you're assigned to. Can we have food on Sundays? We eat on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, there was a time in, at which we allowed care packages from home, which were supposed to be homemade goodies, to uh, come to the dean and on Sundays the students could eat it. Uh, what we found was that most students weren't that interested in homemade goodies. They wanted ramen and chips and other things that were not that helpful. And so Sundays, they just picked out on that and didn't eat hardly anything else. Um, and that, you know, part of what we're trying to do is develop appetites for healthful food. So we didn't find that it helped. Then we found also that um, the dean's apartment, this is no exaggeration, one room, because my son was, um, one of my sons was a boy's dean, one room of his home was not quite floor to ceiling, but almost floor to ceiling of boxes of things that kids had sent themselves or parents had sent. Uh, and, and it was mainly junk foods. Um, and, you know, deans have a, 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 a ability, should have an ability to have their house without boxes and boxes of stuff. And then kids started thinking they should bring refrigerated things and put it in their refrigerator. At that point, we said, no, this is not working. So we do have food on Sundays, but it's not sent in. When you go home, you can have those. One more thing on this one. Can we work in the morning for our vocational training now since college is gone? We could have, we could have vocational uh, labs in the morning and classes in the afternoon. Uh, we typically don't do that because, and many schools have to because they have too many students, they have to break it up, but we've chosen not to because uh, your mind is usually fresher in the morning. After lunch is generally a bad time to sit down in a class. Um, depending on what you're doing, if it's outside work, especially in the winter, uh, it's pretty cold to be outside. But if you all really wanted to do that, I think we could do something of that nature. Um, and I, let's see, this next week is not Sunday classes. It's the next week, right? How many of you think you would really prefer to have morning class, our morning classes in the afternoon and do your vocational training in the morning? Could I see your hands? Okay, I think it's unanimous. Thank you. Um, if there was something that needed to be changed here at OHA, what would it be? I'd like somebody else to answer those, that. <laughs> this is why we have Q&As. So students can ask questions they don't really know why something is. So, I mean... You can, if you feel like anything should be changed, then you can ask. And we can answer them. <laughs> it's hard to identify just one thing, and we can't spend a lot of time on that. I'll tell you that as a staff, we're always looking at how can we make our program better. At Christmas, while you are home, we'll spend two and a half days studying this very question. How can we do better? What do we need? As we look at the Lord's counsel, what do we need to change, come up higher in? So I don't know what, but I can tell you from my perspective, not from what we'll study, but from my perspective, if there is something that I would like to see changed, I would like to hear an end 
of the talk from students that I don't want to be at OHA. I'd really prefer every student who didn't want to, as much as I love you, I'd like you to go somewhere else where you can be happy. But some of you repeat that song over and over and over and over and over, and it has its impact on your fellow classmates. And if you don't really want to be here, you're not a prisoner. We will help you go somewhere else. But it has a very negative impact. So if there was one thing, I mean, no, I would probably, there are other things I might put ab above that. But that, that is something that if I could change something, I would. Um, and I know that some of you, no doubt, did come. Uh, either you lie to us when we uh, ask you questions, or you didn't tell us a complete truth. Maybe you came because you didn't have any choice and you didn't want to stay home, okay? But you still chose. So it would help you tremendously to adjust and to be happy if you stopped repeating that. And for some of the rest of you who say that over and over about everybody else, I would like to see that, hear that stop because I know that everybody here would be happier if that wasn't the song that some of you were singing. You asked me, so I told you. Okay. Can we pay more just to get better food in the cafeteria, like honey? Everybody complains about the food. And I know a lot of people say I don't have the right to talk because I live at home. But I have, um, I have heard everybody complain about the food. And we are getting better food compared to like three years ago. Because when I was here three years ago, I walked into the cafeteria and I wasn't used to this food. And I came out only eating a pear. But I see that the food has really changed a lot since the time I've been here. And I know Nathaniel can say the same thing. And everybody that's been here since freshman year. Um, but everybody complains about the food. And wherever you go, everybody's going to complain about the food. I've gone to Ozark. They complained about the food. I went to Andrews at their cafeteria. They had this huge buffet with salads and pizzas and all these different kinds of things. And I went home uh, to one of my friend's house and I told them I ate at the Andrews cafeteria. And they're like, ew, you went to the Andrews cafeteria? That food's disgusting. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. So I mean, be thankful for what you have here because I know there's a lot of people that probably are definitely worse off than any one of us think we are. So, And we are having better food, by the way. We've been served good food in the cafeteria. So. One of the things that the school has tried to do, which I've appreciated, is, you know, this school is a lot, gives opportunity to a lot of students who don't necessarily have money, to um, a lot of parents who try to send their kids to Christian schools, and a lot of Christian schools are, you know, 16000 and up a year, which is really expensive. And yes, they have daya cheese and soy milk and honey and all those things, but one thing that this school does is it really tries to lower the cost so that, you know, any kid who wants to go here or any parents who want to send their kids to a Christian school will have an opportunity to send them to a, a good school. I should say something, and I appreciate that because we do do that, but if we were really trying to lower the cost, we would feed you junk food. It would be a lot cheaper for us to feed you junk food that you want than the healthy food that you need. If we feed, fed you cheese and we fed you made up ramen noodles, we could reduce our food budget by about half, maybe more. Because the food that we feed you is more expensive than the junk food that the other schools that charge sixteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year feed you. 
They buy it pre-made, they just open the package and they dump the mayonnaise out, and poof, it's half the cost and 10 times less the labor than what it takes for us to provide things that are actually healthy. So we're doing it not for your saving fun, saving, saving money. Our food budget is one of our highest expenses. Mm -hmm. And that's not by accident. It's because we made the harder choice that there are healthier things that are more important than our taste buds. <laughs> and um, whole wheat bread, if you had the choice of white, who would naturally choose whole wheat? It's not as easy to eat, it doesn't taste as nice. We don't naturally t choose those things that are healthy for us. We like the things that are not healthy. And if we put out honey, you know what happened to it? it would be em the bottle would be empty at the first meal. And we have a balance between trying to make it what it should be and trying to make it also enjoyable. And that's, that's our goal. And, uh, but it's not easy because when we come, we don't have those natural taste buds and we have to develop them. You know what it makes, in my life, when I personally chose, this is for my benefit and I want to learn to like that, that is when I started enjoying healthy food. Prior to that, my sister came home, she went to Weimar and we grew up eggs, milk, cheese, all this stuff, you know, uh, like most of you all. I grew up on that. My, my, my sister came back, she got converted. My sister, my oldest sister, not Shelly, but my oldest sister got converted and a remarkable change in her life. And she went from being out in the world basically to going to Weimar and she came home and she threw out eggs, milk, cheese, oil, salt <laughs> of our home, just about. And we went from eating white bread to eating whole wheat waffles that took 10 minutes to cut, to cook. Your waffles normally take cooking about 30 seconds to a minute or two. And now we were making these, we called them industrial strength waffles. <laughs> Literally, because they took a long time to chew and they were hard to digest and we couldn't stomach them because we weren't used to them. And as soon as she left to go back to Weimar, you know what we said at home? Whew. Where are those eggs? Bring them out. Get some milk. Get some oil. Get some. And we, we did. We didn't eat. We didn't. We didn't. Uh, we, we, we brought it all back in because we weren't ready for it and we didn't like it. A few years later, she came back. She'd kind of had a transformation and they lived near us and they were like, OK, you can eat your own cheese pizza and we'll order ours without cheese and we'll order yours for cheese. And we were like, oh, OK, so we're eating our cheese pizza and they're eating their cheeseless pizza. And we're like. <laughs> and it started working this time on our heart. And when I came to the point, and this was in my teenage years, I was right around 15, 16, 17, when our family kind of finally made that choice. And when we finally, and when for myself, when I said, you know, and I read and I studied more in the spirit of prophecy, and I read the council and I believed in it, and I was like, you know, if this is what I ought to do, I might as well learn to like it. And when I made that choice, suddenly I found out that indeed I did. It made a difference because it's the, the taste buds are not what control your, your appetite. It's your brain. And when my brain chose, my taste buds followed. And I learned to like that which my brain said I should. Because by God's grace, that's what he does in our life. When we choose the right, it's the choice. It's the attitude. It's not as much the action. The actions will follow when we have Christ at our heart and we choose it for the right reasons. At least that's what I found in my life. And I think you'll find it too. You can complain about it, but what Mrs. Clark said, if you one thing that you can improve about OHA, I have another one to suggest about to improve on OHA. What do you think it is? Quit complaining about the food. You can't change it. Why complain about it? Is it going to make you better or worse? You know, quit complaining about it and just make the choice and say, study for yourself and say, is this the better way or not? If you can find that it's not the better way, come and show us. Give us the research. There's plenty of it out there. But I think you'll find it all confirms what we're trying to feed you. Why can't girls at OHA hug at school? First of all, I don't think we've ever said girls can't hug at school. However, we have encouraged discretion. And discretion means, among other things, 
you don't have long embraces. You're not sitting with arms around each other all the time. You know, a hug is a hug and it's over. <laughs> this is not a hug. That's going beyond. And we live. The reason why we want you to use discretion is because we covet your good reputation, your good name. And we live in a day when there is much male, male, female, female sexual orientation. And you may not believe it, but people do form opinions of you based on what your relationship, how you are physically relating to people, whether that's male, female, male, male, female, female. So we covet your reputation. Somebody told me the, when I talked to them recently about this, but everybody knows. No, not everybody does know. And you don't know what seed you're planting in their mind, and you don't know what temptation that other person may have. And so using discretion is really important. I recently was at a, well, I was at a, another school, another academy, and one of the comments from parents and visitors that showed up on a survey was the way the boys, a certain group of boys, were relating to each other that created all these questions in their mind. Now, in the minds of staff, there were no questions. They didn't have any question about these young people and their sexual orientation. But in the minds of parents, in the minds of visitors to campus, there was. And you don't know what people are thinking. And so when we come to you and say, mm, you all need to sit up straight, you need to not have your arms around each other, you need to, that's not saying you can't ever hug somebody. But it is saying you're going a little bit over the line and you're not using discretion, particularly in a public setting, but discretion needs to be used in a private setting too. Because, as I said, you don't know what temptations that other person may have. And you don't want to put yourself in temptation's way either. Do we still have hydrogen peroxide in our food? I don't think so. No, we don't. We, we now have great aluminum-free baking soda, so, yeah. It's not just aluminum-free baking powder, because many aluminum-free baking powders still have soda in it. And our council is against as much against soda as it is against there's nothing in the Spirit of Prophecy that talks about aluminum in the baking powder. No doubt that is a problem. But there's plenty about soda. And soda is in most baking powders, even the aluminum-free. But we have some other alter alternatives. Why can't we bring board games? We have a hectic schedule, that's one. And two, not all board games are necessarily wholesome, in a way. Um, a lot of people don't think about um, certain things in their board. They're like, oh, it's a board game, just like we say with movies. Oh, it's just a movie. Sometimes board games also have, I mean, it depends on what board game it is, but... I mean, it's better to be safe than sorry. Plus, we don't have time for that. Our schedules are so... And then we try to do activities like dorm night and have, like, things for us to do. So that takes the place of that. Have you all been told you can have board games? Hmm? Okay. That, that's kind of new to me. 
Um, now, it is hard to find non-competitive board games. Um, most board games would not be appropriate on Friday night or Sabbath, but I don't know that we've ever said that you can't have board games. I'm, I'm just not sure where that's coming from. Um, I'm sure there are some board games that we would say you could not have uh, just because of the amount of time. When, when I was in college, for instance, we had a acquaintance. He, he seemed to just really um, like my husband and I, except we weren't married at that time. But um, he loved Monopoly. How many of you played Monopoly? How, how long is a short game of Monopoly? Huh? Three or four hours. Yeah. And he would play Monopoly until two and three in the morning. He loved Monopoly. We wouldn't play with him. Nobody wanted to get into a game with him, but he'd find somebody. You know what happened? He flunked out. Surprising? No. Um, so, you know, there is a balance, but I don't think we've ever classified board games. I, I, I'm just not aware that we said you can't ever have a board game. We would want it to be non-competitive. When we use board games on a Saturday night, we, <coughs> we could take out the competitive um, angle of it, but that's hard to do when there's just two or three or four of you in a room uh, sometime. But there are some board games that, that are good, I think. I have one. Um, that I just got not too long ago. I don't play board games. I actually got it for y'all. Um, I mean, I don't usually play board games. Um, on, I don't know, Manage Your Money. It's a Dave Ramsey thing. Yeah, and, and we had a good time when we played. We played it this summer. Um, and I think it's, a, it's not real educational. It's not as educational as I'd hoped it would be, but it did have some educational elements to it, and yet it was fun. So, I go ahead. Honestly, they might be confusing it with no card games. Okay, if you're talking about card games, that's a different story. We do have counsel to avoid card games um, because they tend to. The tendency, you know, you can say, well, that's not how we play it. Well, it may not be how we're playing it, but I firmly believe that the Lord knows more about how the devil's tactics works than we do. And so our counsel is to avoid card games, not because it tends to, for some people, uh, have them develop a um, in, intense interest in um, what's it called um, becoming an expert and then when you become an expert in it it tends to make you uh, want to bet money and earn money and and so it, it it's just a little divergence but for some, and who knows who that some will be, it creates an interest in gambling. And I personally know, not living very far from here, an Adventist couple who are divorced because of the, the husband's constant gambling. Yes? Well, I think if you're playing a children's card game on trees or flowers or, I mean, I think there can be some educational card games, but like Uno, which is a real popular Adventist, in ad, many Adventist circles, those kind, I don't think they have a place. So we don't have those here. Thank you very much. Good questions. I think we answered all but one and our time is up. So, Mr. Neal, would you have prayer for us, please? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are thankful that uh, we have counsel from your word, and as much as we try to follow it, we ask for wisdom and guidance to um, uh, discern aright. And I pray especially for our hearts that we might study for our shell ourselves to um, understand and know the principles that you've given us and uh, have hearts that want to follow them. And when our minds decide... Um, we will find that our, our, our hearts will follow. And what we say with our mouth also will change our hearts. If we speak 
bad things, complaining, murmuring, we will find that uh, we have hearts that uh, have the same experience of foreboding and misery. But if we speak faith and courage and hope and love, we will find um, that our hearts follow in joy and happiness. Help us, Father, today to experience that, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.